Greetings, OAA Managers Internal Control Program participants. Welcome to OAA's workshop number one for reporting cycle FY20. My name is Yafet Brooks. I'm the Internal Control Administrator for OAA. This is Mr. Elbert Jackson, my alternate for MICP. The agenda will cover the following topics. The purpose of this workshop was to discuss the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller, or ASA FMNC requirements and OA requirements for the FY20 reporting cycle. For FY20, ASA FMMC MICP focus areas are the risk assessment. When identifying each strategic risk, consider the following questions. What are Army's leadership's priority areas? What can go wrong in preventing the Army from achieving its objectives and mission? What are the threats or vulnerabilities to the Directorate's mission? What could cause reputational damage to the Army? What could impact Army's readiness? Internal Control Evaluation Plan, ISEP. Your ISEP will be based on your risk assessment. Internal Control Evaluation Testing. We will discuss this later on in the training. Financial Statement Audit Connection. The Financial Statement Audit by the Independent Public Accountant has increased its focus within the Manager's Internal Controls program. Therefore, having effective internal controls in place will help the Army in achieving its focus on reducing material weaknesses. For FY20, OAA modeled the reporting period similar to USACE's top-down MICP process, in which the risk assessments drive the rest of the reporting period. This process has been approved by Mr. Averill, and it has been included in the Senior Level Steering Group Senior Assessment Team Quarter 2 FY19 briefing. Further, it is consistent with the FY20 ASA FMMC guidance. Feedback received in FY19 was that Army organizations were scoring risk too high for a lot of Army programs to include administrative programs. Risk should be scored at the Army operational level. Any program with an overall risk over 40 will be reevaluated and a plan will be developed to lower the risk. Next, we will cover FY20 MICP requirements. The Army's internal control system is governed by six main pieces of authoritative guidance. The GAO Green Book, FMFIA, FFMIA, OMB Circle Alpha 123, DOTI 51040, and AR 11-2. The GAO Green Book prescribes standards for internal controls for federal agencies. The Green Book incorporates Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Treadway Commission, more widely known as COSO, framework and principles to establishing, maintaining, and evaluating internal controls in the federal government. The Federal Manager's Financial Integrity Act requires agencies to establish internal control and financial systems that provide reasonable assurance of achieving internal control objectives. These regulations require agencies to provide an annual statement of assurance on whether the agency has met these internal control objectives. The Federal Financial Management Improvement Act requires federal agencies to have systems that generate timely, accurate, and useful information with which to make informed decisions and to ensure accountability. Agencies must report on compliance with federal financial management system requirements, federal accounting standards, and USSGL at the transactional level. The Office of Management and Budget Circular Alpha 123 defines management's responsibility for internal controls. This circular, which was most recently updated in June 2018, adds additional responsibility to management to maintain an enterprise risk management framework within federal agencies. The DOTI 510.40 and Army Regulation 11-2 both assign responsibility and prescribe procedures for the execution of the manager's internal control program at the DOD level and Army level respectively. These two documents outline the requirements for MICP to be established to review, assess, and report on the effectiveness of internal controls. On this slide, you'll see OAA's current training requirements. ASA FMNC is in the process of updating all the training modules to correlate with the new requirements. All training was due to OAA on 26 November 2019. If you're involved in MICP, Manager, ICA, AUM, SRO, you must have the explicit statement of responsibility for internal controls. The OAA standards that it will be included in Part C DOD core values and organizational goals. Further, during our staff assistant visits from FY19, 
Several MICP stakeholders did not include this statement as part of their DP maps. According to AR 11-2, the explicit statement of responsibility can take any form. However, OAA prefers if you use the examples provided. We will cover the Internal Control Evaluation Plan, or ICEP. The ICEP will be based on the risk assessment that is reviewed at the beginning of the MICP reporting period. This document acts as a bridge between the risk assessment and the internal control evaluation appendix. Risk identified as high risk are required to be tested every year. Risk determined as medium will need to be tested at least once every two years on the ICEP. Risk determined to be low will be tested at least once every five years. The MICP administrator will perform compliance testing each year to ensure that each organization is in compliance with issued program guidance. As the graphic on the slide depicts, the risk assessment is the driver of the ISEP, which determines what will be reviewed for that fiscal year. If any Army regulation requires more frequent reviews versus your risk rating, follow the regulation frequency. This slide addresses OAA requirements for building your ISAP. Let's discuss the DA Form 11-2 Internal Control Evaluation. An internal control evaluation is a detailed, systematic, and comprehensive examination of key controls to determine if they are in place, being used as intended, effective in achieving their purpose. They must include any inspections, audits that have recurring reports, data collection requirements, specific major functional areas of responsibility, OAA mandatory evaluations, and new regulations. All evaluations will be documented on a DA Form 11-2 Internal Control Evaluation Certification, and it must be signed by your AUM. Further, key management controls must be formally evaluated at least once every five years. Internal control testing should meet auditing standard and support management assessment of its internal controls. Management should consider reducing reliance on the Army regulation checklist for its assessments and focus on performing, reperforming simulation testing to fulfill auditor expectations. In accordance with ASA FMC, sampling is the preferred method of testing for internal controls. Each organization is required to maintain all supporting documentation, and documentation must be readily available upon request. The Army encourages organizations to integrate and coordinate internal control assessments with other control related activities. However, the organization is responsible for ensuring that results are substantially supported. That being said, if your organization is conducting management reviews expressly for the purpose of assessing the internal controls or for other purposes within the assessment of the internal controls as a byproduct of the review, you may incorporate them as part of your internal control evaluations. Here is a sample of the internal control evaluation. AUNs must certify all internal control evaluations on DA Form 11-2. Please ensure that the date on your DA Form 11-2 is the same as the date on your evaluation checklist. The FY20 Appendix B internal control evaluation must be submitted with your DA Form 11-2 evaluations. This report serves as a summary to capture the programs tested at your organization during the MICP year and the results noted. All programs evaluated will be listed on this spreadsheet. As in FY19, all evaluations will include a test plan on how you conducted your evaluation. Test plans will include key control activities identified in the risk profile as well as your testing results. Moving forward, the five mandatory evaluations will be chosen on a rotational basis from the programs in the center column. For FY20, the mandatory programs are listed on the right column. All organizations will evaluate the mandatory programs with the exception of the government travel charge card. RSW is the proponent for OAA. They will evaluate that program for all of OAA. Also, you will evaluate at least 20% of your major functional areas. Your evaluation will be based on the results of your risk assessment. Further, 
If your organization is a proponent for a program, you must evaluate it at that level. For example, SPD is a proponent for Army conferences. Therefore, we will evaluate that program at the Army level. We will discuss sampling. Effective testing will generally require examining a control at a particular location in different instances, referred to as sampling. This year, the preferred method of testing is sampling. Two steps to prepare the sample. Identify the population. Identify the sample size. In some cases, when the population is smaller than the recommended sample size, test 100% of the transactions. Your sample cannot be changed once finalized. For OAA, your population will be all the transactions or documents from the last time you conducted an evaluation until the day that your AUM assigns your 11-2. If this is the first time you evaluated this program, please use 1 June 2019 as the first day of your transactions and use the day your AUM signs the DA Form 11-2 as the last day. FYI, the FY20 MICP reporting period is from 1 June 2019 to 15 May 2020. A confidence level tells you how reliable your sample is. Confidence level refers to the percentage of all the possible samples that can be expected to include the true population parameter. A 0% confidence level means that you have no faith at all if you repeated the survey that you will get the same results. A 100% confidence level means there is no doubt at all if you repeated the survey you will get the same results. For example, what a 90% confidence level is saying is that if the sample was repeated over and over again, the results were matched results from the actual population 90% of the time. Another example is, when we need to infer something about a larger population and have only a sample to work with, our statistic will be a guess, and that guess will contain some degree of potential error. After you choose your sampling technique, document the sample in the testing pan template DA Form 11-2 and the Internal Control Appendix B. OAA requirements are consistent with audit standards. OAA requirements are 5% margin of error, 90% confidence level. You will receive an editable sample calculator with the hard copy of this presentation. This Excel calculator meets the sampling requirements from ASA FMMC. On this slide, the red arrow indicates where OAA is in the FY20 reporting period. Of the FY20 major milestones, you have completed the risk assessments and the organizational ICEPs. The next major milestones will be the sampling class and the evaluations. Please review the remaining requirements for the FY20 reporting period. This concludes the FY20 MICP workshop. If you have any questions regarding the information provided, please contact us.